Do you have a ton of scrap wood laying around your garage and you're not sure what to do with it? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how you can take your scrap wood and turn it into beautiful pieces of home decor. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Liz and for today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can take scrap wood or wood that you may already have and turn it into some really fun fall and Halloween decor. If you don't already have the scrap wood at your home, you could check your local hardware stores, Lowe's, Home Depot. A lot of times they have really discounted wood in the back. You can also ask them if they have any scrap wood that they can give away for free. It's worth a shot to ask. Or you could even go on your local Facebook marketplace a lot of times people are giving away pallet wood for free. Pick yourself up some scrap wood and let's get into this first DIY. For this project, we are going to take two wood pieces. You are going to cut a triangle. I cut mine at 7 inches by 12 inches. And then you're going to take another piece of wood, cut it into a circle. I did this with a jigsaw. It was the first time that I've used it, so it wasn't perfect by any means. But I think that it worked out just fine and it still looks really cute. You can cut this to any size you want. You just want it to be bigger than the bottom portion of your triangle. Next, you're going to paint your triangle and your circle with some Waverly chalk paint and ink. And I just gave both pieces one good coat front back and sides next I'm going to take my chocotor surface wax because I am going to be using a chocotor transfer on this and the reason why I use the wax is because this is a porous surface and the wax is going to help prevent bleeding so I use this every single time I'm using a porous surface so I'm just going to rub my wax on there I'm going to take this chocotor transfer I love this one because it has all these kind of witchy sayings I think it's really fun but I'm going to take this one that says October which is fuzz the back a couple times so it's not too sticky and then I just center this where I want it on my hat and then I'm just going to use my chocotor paste in bright white I just squeegee it on there and then I just remove all the excess paste so you don't have too much paste on your transfer and you'll peel that up and then I had a couple people ask me about washing your transfer so I'm going to show you how I clean mine yes my sink is very dirty <laughs> and it needs to be washed so don't mind that besides the messy sink we are going to take one of these sponges you can actually get them off of Chocotor's website but if you don't have those you can also just use a soft sponge and I'm going to take the transfer and run it under warm water and with that sponge I'm just going to remove all the paste now especially using different colors or black, your transfer is going to stain. That is 100% normal. You mostly want to focus getting all the paste off of the mesh portion of your transfer. If the green portion stains, that is 100% normal. And then you just lay it on its back to dry, sticky side up. Next, I'm going to go back to my hat and I'm going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to go over all the edges of the triangle, just going around the entire thing. I slightly distressed it throughout the front of it, but not too much. And then I'm going to do that exact same thing to the base of our witch's hat. And after I've gotten that all done, I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in white on a chip brush and I'm going to distress both the base and the triangle. Just lightly dry brushing over this, dabbing most of the paint off and then running my brush throughout the pieces. I'm going to take this super glue wood glue and I'm going to add my triangle to the base, making a cute little hat. And then I'm going to take a couple different types of ribbons and materials these all came from the Dollar Tree and this black ribbon I didn't want that kind of plasticky looking sides so I just cut those off with some scissors then I will wrap it around the base of that hat and hot glue it to the back you just want to make sure that you're pulling tight on the sides so that the ribbon is nice and flat when it goes around that triangle and then you're just going to glue it in place on the back and then I'm going to take this mesh ribbon that that also came from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to layer this right on top of the black ribbon. And then this mesh type material, it also came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take a piece and kind of drape it around the bottom 
of the hat and I just glued a couple pieces down around the hat so that it wouldn't move around too much but I didn't want it to be super stiff with glue so just a couple spots glued down was fine and I had these orange berries and I just grabbed a couple of those put them on the hat where I wanted them, glued those down. Lastly, I'm gonna take some raffia. I took several pieces and I'm just going to tie this in a shoelace type bow, just taking two loops and tying them together. I mess with the size of the loop several times and I'm going to add some hot glue to the back of it and I just glue that right to the middle of those berries. And that is it for this DIY. I love this one so much. I think this turned out so cute and I feel like this is something you could definitely make a lot of, sell them at your craft shows. I think this one is by far my favorite in today's video. Popping in here really quickly to let you know you only have a couple more days to snag my August subscription craft box. If you haven't signed up for my monthly subscription box and you want this one, make sure that you do it before September 1st. After August 31st, this one will no longer be available, so make sure to sign up. I'll leave that link down in my description box for our monthly subscription box where you get a wooden craft kit like this. Comes completely unfinished, ready for you to paint it the way that you want it. And it also comes with some scrapbook paper that you can use to embellish your craft kit. So if you want to sign up and get this one, make sure to sign up again before September 1st. The link is down below. For this DIY, we are gonna take a one by six piece of wood. We are gonna cut it to about 19 inches and you're gonna paint it with some white paint. This is my Waverly chalk paint in white. You're gonna paint the front, the sides, and the back. I had a ton of this wood just laying around and I had bought it to use for other things. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna use it for some projects. So after the paint is dried, I am going to take my sandpaper and I'm gonna run it along all the sides. I wanted some of that natural wood to peek through. I'm gonna mix this Waverly chalk paint and pumpkin with my Dixie Belle chalk paint and rusty nail. I wanted the rusty orange type look, so the rusty color was a little bit too red and dark, so I added just a little bit of that pumpkin color to it and gave it more of an orange look, and that's definitely what I was going for. I'm gonna take these wood pumpkins that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I took four of them, three of them I'm going to paint. I'm painting one in this rusty color, and the one thing you wanna do before you paint is add some wood filler to your pumpkins. I forgot to do that before I painted that one pumpkin, but that's okay because we can just paint over it. But I just took a little popsicle stick and I'm gonna fill in those holes. The next color, I'm gonna paint this pumpkin. This is actually this blue color that I concocted. I mixed a whole bunch of different colors up and got this one and I love this color for fall, so. I painted one in that and then my third pumpkin, I'm going to paint in my Waverly chalk paint in moss. After that's dry, I'm gonna take a chip brush that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna add a little bit of Waverly Wax and Antique to the stem of the pumpkin and then I'm also going to dry brush throughout it and I just dab off the majority of that wax and then go back and forth on my pumpkin. I do that to all three of my pumpkins. I really wanted these to have a distressed look once I did the wax, I went back in with some white chalk paint, just distressing over those pumpkins on top of the wax. Next, I'm gonna take this Hello Autumn scrapbook paper pack that you can actually purchase from my website, moredecalanddecor.com. I love this paper, it is available right now, so if you're wanting it, I will leave that link in my description box. And I'm gonna take this paper that has a ton of fun fall sayings and words on it. I'm going to use my glue stick to attach that paper to my pumpkin. And then I'll just distress it like I did the other ones, not quite as much 
much, but I'm going to add some brown to the stem. And then I go over all the edges with a little paintbrush and that wax because you do have paper on it. I wanted the sides to look all brown instead of showing that white paper on the side. So I just covered that up with the wax. I'm using some wood super glue that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to lay my pumpkins down on top of my wood piece. And I just use this leveler to help get my pumpkins all nice and straight so they weren't, you know, slowly curving down or up. And I'm just going to glue all four of my pumpkins on there. And to finish it off, I'm going to make several raffia bows. I'm going to make three of those and put those on my painted pumpkins. I'm just doing a super simple shoelace type bow taking two loops and tying them together. Then I'll hot glue those down to the stems of all three of my pumpkins. For my fourth pumpkin, I'm gonna use some twine. I thought it was really fun kind of doing one pumpkin different than all the other ones, make it stand out a little bit more. And I thought this turned out absolutely adorable. I think this is so cute sitting on an entryway table or a shelf. I'm really excited because we are putting built-ins into our living room. This is one that I definitely plan on putting it up on one of those shelves. Make sure that you're following our family vlog channel so that you can see that process coming in the near future. For this DIY, you are going to take a total of five pieces. Your back piece is going to be a one by six. I cut this down to about 18 inches. And like I said, this is a one by six. You are going to take a one by two. You're gonna cut that into four pieces. Your top and bottom portion to your frame are gonna be about 19 and a half inches. Your two shorter pieces on the sides will be roughly five inches. You just want to make sure your pieces on the sides are the same width as the base piece. And then your top and bottom piece will be the length of the entire thing with your one by twos on the sides and your base in the middle. Hopefully that makes sense. You can see how I kind of am putting this together right here to show you exactly how to cut out your frame. So I'm gonna start by staining my frame pieces. This is just the Rust-Oleum Barrel Brown and I give all four of these pieces one good coat in this stain. Now I also cut out five other pieces using that one by six and these pieces are all to size for a chocotor transfer that I'm using. I'll show you exactly how I did that in a minute but I will in my description box leave the measurements of each piece just because I did, I didn't have them right here. So I will have to go measure those and look at them and I'll leave that down below so that you can check out those measurements if you're wanting to recreate this DIY. But you're also going to stain those in the exact same color. And then for your base piece, I'm just going to paint this with my Waverly chalk paint in white. I'm just going to paint the front of it. I wanted this DIY to be very farmhousey, kind of more of that rustic look to it. Just a neutral farmhousey type piece. So that's why I chose those colors. You could definitely switch this up if you wanted to, make it more of a Halloween themed vibe if you wanted. And I'm also going to be using a Chalk Couture transfer in this. So I'm going to use my Chalk Couture surface wax on a cloth and I'm just rubbing that all over. Again, because this is a porous surface, I want to make sure that I get as little bleeding as I possibly can. And then I'm also going over all those individual pieces that we cut with that as well. Now this is a transfer we're going to be using. I thought this was so much fun and I loved all those skeletons on there. So the first sign is going to be I got this feeling inside my bones. Now I get a lot of people saying that they think that they're not going to be fast enough to use Chocotor. Trust me I am the exact same way. When I do my projects I like to take my time but I'm going to show you how you can do it and not worry about the chalk paste drying on your transfer if you're doing it a little slower. I like to put my chalk paste down on the first half of it and then slowly peel that transfer up as I'm going. I'm gonna continue to put my chalk paste on and then just slowly lifting that up. That's gonna prevent the chalk paste from drying to your transfer and then it not coming up the way that it should. But you can see I'm still just adding my chalk paste to the other half and then slowly 
slowly peeling my transfer up and this helps me to do this perfectly every single time so it's not drying to my transfer and then none of it actually transfers to my wood and so if you're worried about doing it too slow try out this method and I guarantee you it's gonna work now for all of my small little block pieces that I cut out I am going to put each skeleton on each block I measured out each block according to each skeleton on here so that's why they're all a little bit of a different size because each skeleton was a little bit of a different size and I'm just gonna use my bright white chalk paste on each of these and all I'm gonna do is add my chalk paste and remove my transfer and then you have these cute skeletons on each of these pieces once you're all the way done then you can take it to your sink and wash it it's not too big of a deal to go through this and with the chalk paste on there you'll still be able to get it off when you wash your transfer and I thought these would be so cute sitting around the sign sitting on top of the sign you had all these little skeletons everywhere like I said you could make this more themed towards Halloween with Halloween colors I just thought that the more farmhouse look for this was really, really cute. So I just added each skeleton to each of my pieces of wood. And then for the skeleton that's laying down, that piece of wood ended up being a little bit taller than I wanted it to be. So after I put him on the wood block, I did take it out to my saw and I just cut it down a little bit so there wasn't so much empty space at the top. Lastly, we are going to assemble our sign. I use this wood super glue. I put it on the top of my backing and add the top one by two to it, making sure that it's all nice and even with the sides on there. And then I just continue adding glue to each piece and gluing this all together. I did take some clamps in the end and clamp these together. And you could also use some finishing nails as well. I just didn't, you know, feel like doing that at this time. So I just did the glue, added my clamps, waited for it to dry overnight, and this is how it turned out. This one is so much fun. Like I said, I love the skeletons all around the sign, and I cannot wait to put this on my built-ins when they get finished, probably in the next couple months. I don't know, but I cannot wait. For this DIY, you are going to take some two by fours. These are just scrap wood two by fours that I had in my garage. And I cut some triangles off of a couple other two by fours making ears. So you just wanna make sure that you're cutting your triangles to the same size. So each ear is the exact same size. You're just going to cut it in a triangle on each piece. You could also just cut a triangle into the center of a two by four, but I personally found this a little bit easier, but however you want to do this will work. Just make sure you have two triangles on each two by four. Next, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and ink, and I'm going to paint both of those two by fours and my four triangle pieces in one good coat of this color. Next, you will take your little ears and some wood super glue, and you are going to glue this to the top of your pieces. If you have not guessed by now, we are making wooden cats, and I just take each ear, glue it to the top, and I do this for both pieces. Next, I'm taking a round foam foam brush and dabbing it in some white paint and we are going to make some eyes. These do not have to be perfect. In fact, a couple of mine were a little bit wonky. One was definitely up higher than the other one, but it still turned out really cute. So just start by making your eyes. And then after you have your white portion of the eyes on there, you can take a black paint pen and I am just drawing in the pupils. I am no artist by any means. So if I can do this, you can definitely do this. My drawing skills are very lacking. You know, they, they're just not the greatest. So draw yourself some cat eye pupils onto each eye and fill that in with your black paint pen. 
Next, we're gonna add a little scarf onto each of our cats. And to do this, I took some yarn that I had. This is some pretty chunky yarn, not anything crazy, but I would definitely say this is thicker than most. And I'm gonna cut three strands out. I made mine a little bit longer than I necessarily needed to. You just want enough to wrap two times around your two by fours. And I am just going to braid this all the way down. You could do knit scarves if you wanted, but this is definitely what was easier for me in the moment. I'm gonna take that yarn and I'm just gonna start pulling apart the loops because I wanted this to be a little bit looser, a little chunkier, and not so tightly braided together. You're gonna do this two times. I did it with a red yarn and then with a more white creamy yarn and I'm going to wrap it two times around my cats and then tie these together in a knot on the side. And then those knots that I had tied to keep the braids together, I undid that and I also unraveled all of the yarn at the bottom just to give it more of a full look. So I just untwisted it all and I did that for both of my cats and that is it. These would be really cute sitting outside, especially if you did bigger ones. You could put these on a base so that they stay together and they're nice and standing up. Or you could just throw it on your entryway table or on a shelf of some sort. I think these are so adorable and they were so, so easy to make. For this DIY, I took some scrap pallet wood that I had. I am going to take two pieces. Now you can find shapes like this at the Dollar Tree with their little pumpkin signs that they have, but I wanted mine to be a little bit bigger, which is why I cut these down using my pallet wood. And all you're gonna do is take a piece, measure out how long you want it, and then cut each corner off so that the corners are flat instead of pointed. I'm gonna paint one in this blue color that I mixed a whole bunch of paint together for and then the other one I'm gonna paint in my Waverly chalk paint in white I did add some washi tape on here because I wanted to add some black stripes to it I didn't have any tape that was thick enough that I was looking for so I just doubled up on the washi tape and then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm going to paint the white portions black so that I have some black stripes on the pumpkin Once you're done painting, you're just going to remove your tape. I'm gonna go back to my other blue pumpkin. I'm gonna add some surface wax on there because I am gonna be using a charcoal transfer on the bottom of it. I'm gonna use some sandpaper and rough up both my pumpkins a little bit on the black and white striped one. I really wanted this one to look messy, so I just went over the entire thing and the black got onto the white and I loved it. I loved how messy it looked. And for the other pumpkin, I'm gonna use these Farm Fresh Pumpkin Transfers that come with the Autumn Tier Tray Transfer Set. It has a whole bunch of little fall words, so I thought this was perfect and I just used my white chalk paste and centered these to the right and added those words onto my pumpkin. And then I will rough up that pumpkin a bit with some sandpaper. I'm gonna take two tumbling tower pieces. I just painted these in my Waverly chalk paint in truffle and I just gave these one good coat. We're gonna be using these as our stems. I'm gonna take that super glue wood glue, add it to the bottom and then glue these to the top of my pumpkins. To finish it off, I'm just gonna take some raffia. I wrap it around my hand a couple times, tie it around the stem of the pumpkin, add some glue, and just pull that raffia tight so that it doesn't come loose and it doesn't go anywhere. I'll just cut off the excess raffia on the sides, and that's all you gotta do for these DIYs. I think these are so stinking cute, especially sitting on a shelf. I think they pair so well together. You could do any colors that you wanted, but I think this one is so adorable.
And that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments down below. Do you guys have a ton of scrap wood laying around ready for you to DIY and what are you going to do with it? Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.